Hello everyone, welcome to Reactive Labs. Today, I am going to talk about something called Open API. Open API. So, what is Open API? This is something which is used during the development. Okay. Simply speaking, Open API is a specification for defining APIs. So, when we have to define APIs, okay. We follow some specifications and one of that specification is open api okay uh, it might sound complicated if i start with the definition of it and go into the technical terms so before that what i will do is i will use an example with which we all can relate to so that we have a clear picture in our mind that okay this is what open api is and that will also clear why open api if not open api then what like what is the problem that open api is solving why open api is uh, required okay so let's take a very common example we all watch youtube and we all want to cook something so sometimes when we know what to cook we just search for the recipe of that item if not we just see what to cook okay so let's assume we know what to cook and we are looking for the recipe okay so how does it work so you know that recipe you have ingredients okay you have like portions how much salt, how much sugar, how much uh, spices you have to add. Next, you have cooking time. Right. Next, you have uh, serving suggestions also. Means let it cool for some time or serve hot or let it cool for one day. Different types of serving suggestions are there. Right. So similar thing exists in the like recipe videos or recipe books also. Whichever you want, you can refer to. Okay. Now, those videos and those books also have something called photos and videos, right? Uh, there is actually there is nobody who just tells you that do this, do this. People show you. If it's a video, then it's very interactive. It shows you if it's a book, if it's a book, then also it contains photos, right? Photos or videos of how each step should look or what the final product is looking like, right? Uh, so this is a systematic thing, right? So this is how recipe works. Now you know that, okay, if there is a recipe book, it should have the order of these things. Or if there is a recipe video, it should be in this order. Then you will know that, okay, this, this, this is a step that I have to follow and it will do it. You can also automate it. Like uh, you can create a program or something. You can tell it that, okay, this will be the order in which the video will come or the book is there. You have to just follow it and make it. So if you have a machine, let's say, which can follow the orders, it can also make it, right? So this is what happens when you have a systematic order of doing things not only systematic systematic and consistent so let's name this open api okay so anyone who is going to make a recipe video needs to follow this format any video needs to follow this format okay so this all the videos will be called open api spec videos because every video is following the open api specification because we know now that okay if we follow these steps it will be easy we know that uh, what we have to do and it's also concise like it's not too much not verbose anybody can understand it you can understand it your computer can understand it anybody can understand it but 
what if there was no specification like this what if it was not like this? what if somebody started video like okay uh, you have to add just just start like you have to add salt you have to add then sugar then you have to add uh, spice okay then after that they tell you uh, okay then do what cook it for five minutes then add chili then add onion so see we do not know when any ingredient will come which makes it hard for us to know beforehand what all ingredients should be prepared with right so this is where the problem comes if we do not define any specification people will follow any order okay like right now there is no specification for recipe so people do follow any order but i am just taking an example if this is the case then you cannot obviously a human can understand it but you cannot train a machine to understand it if you have to automate your task then you cannot tell your machine that okay uh, this 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 is the step this is a uniform step that will be there all the time no because if the steps are not defined and somebody uses it like this somebody else will start with uh, like start cooking and then add something so this is a different approach and machines can be trained only when they have a specified order of doing something so this is also not right also another thing here we have organized it in such a way that okay ingredients we need x y z a b like this what if somebody writes it still follows this order but it writes like this okay so we are going to need some ingredients like salt from xyz store sugar from abc store the sugar is something which is sweet so see till now we have only added salt and sugar but it's so verbose so documentations are like this if we don't follow this specification we will have documentation which will be very verbose which is not something which we want or nobody wants to read that even if people start reading it it will take a lot of time for people to understand which obviously our open api specification solves so this is where the need for open api comes if we know that okay this is the order that we have to look for then okay that's fine we know that every time when a project starts we define the order and everybody can understand it so anybody who wants to follow any recipe in this case will just do this or if anybody has to create a new recipe they will again follow the same format and it will be done open api will open api has this advantage its uniformity and its uh, ability to convey message in less words right so if this is clear now let's go with the technical definitions and all so open api is a specification for defining apis so it's called specification for defining apis okay uh, why is it used it is used for creating documenting and consuming what restful web services it will be used for these things right so what does it do basically it provides a standard way to describe the structure and behavior of an api what standard way for structure and behavior of an api okay which includes what including endpoints in rest we have endpoints right so 
which endpoint will do what requests and response formats request and response formats and other details also if there are any right so this clears the definition so what are the key features of open api the key features of open api include as i mentioned standardized format so open api has standardized format they use either yaml or json they use either yaml or json to describe the apis i'll show with an example how uh, they have interactive documentation so if there is some documentation which i explained in the example like let's say uh, we take something we do this we do this there is no way for us to test what it should actually look like right it is also possible that we misinterpret some things but it has interactive documentation so you can just take this yaml or json file and put it in swagger editor and it will show you okay this is what the uh, request body looks like and this is what the endpoint looks like and this is what the uh, response looks like right open api also helps in code generation so using this open api spec which we define in the yaml or json file open api can generate a sample code for us also okay uh, open api also helps in api validation okay so we can check our api requests and responses we can just do a sample query and we know we we can find out that okay if this is right or wrong okay and we also have one more thing called tooling ecosystem with open api since it's in standard format it becomes very easy for the other tools to interact with it and provide various kinds of functionalities and that's why open api has a lot of integrated tools and libraries which can work with it either they are editors validators converters a lot of things okay so with this i'll show you how this uh, how an example of how this works so i have created one document see mm. i hope it's there yeah mm -hmm. okay so i had created a book api so this is how it goes it's a standard format you can find the template anywhere so i'll just explain what i'm doing we have given the info that okay this is a book api its title uh, its description and everything we have the endpoints in paths okay so let me tell you also what all things this contains this info section that you see it's the metadata so this info section provides metadata about the api such as these things title description and version then we have servers this server is means where we are hosting it okay and uh, next is paths path defines the endpoints of the api here if you see we have books as one endpoint and we have books slash id as also another endpoint so basically what this does is this books gives us the list of all the books okay this books and get get gives us the list of all the books and this post what the post does is post helps us add a new book also so this is what we are telling it they can see if it's books and it's get in its summary is to get a list of books so instead of writing it like this that uh, when we call get we have to get a list of books which contain this 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 for example instead of that we are just writing it and which is clear and concise responses we are also describing different kinds of responses structures that we can have for example if it's 200 it means it's a success if it's 400 it means an error if it's 500 something else 600 something. so it's like this so instead of writing it verbosically like uh, in too many words and sentences we just do it in this format so that it's clear okay its description is a list of books its content is going to be a json and its schema is an array so our list of books should be in an array like this okay similarly for the post it adds a new book 
the request body contains a book input object and re response returns the created book object right similarly for books id it returns a details of a specific book which is defined by the id okay and here if you see if it's a success means if that book exists so it will give a 200 but if that book does not exist it will return a 404 so we are telling these things right and for this component this component section defines the reusable schemas for this book we can reuse it it is a schema for the book object with properties like id title author and publish date similarly for book input it is the schema for the input required to create a new book okay so we need these things to create a new book things like this and when we put it in the swagger um, editor you will see only reading this it formed this thing that okay it has three apis get all the list of books post a new book and get a particular book and when we click on this also we can see the schemas see the book should have this kind of schema id title author and publish date if we have book input it should be title author and publish date it means we are adding a new book then we have to must add title and author because it's mandatory okay now let's see these apis so in the get if you see it shows you okay 200 it's a list of books and it should go like this okay and if you see no sorry actually it's not it's when you do this get the response should be 200 okay that okay uh, if it's a 200 if you get a list of books then it should be like this in this format that okay id title author and publish date should be there when you post again for the post the response is 201 that okay the book is posted for getting a specific book it should have two for 200 it shows this and if 400 404 it shows like this book not found so now we know that okay this is how our api should look like and this is how we should start our development and this makes our development work very easy okay let me show you one more thing so we have this for example default get a list of books if we click try it out and if we execute see what happens it says fail to fetch poss possible reasons could be cause network failure different things because here if you see this is the request url that you are seeing here this is the url and here books because the endpoint is now books so after v1 books is added and since this is not a valid url this is just an example it's not working there are ways to do this um, you can use something called um, there is one more editor i forgot the name but something is there which you can install in your system and when you uh, start it using the same file it will create a server let's say its address is localhost 4420 so when you put here localhost 4420 and then if you put it it will show you that okay when this was done this kind of fetching happened and actually it will also return the same thing this one so it's nothing new it's nothing that you are missing anything here i am just i was just trying to show how it works so if you use tools you can google what kind of tools are there or i can make another video let me know what i should do I'll make another video on how to fetch that, how to display what you are uh, seeing here without getting this network failure error. And uh, yeah, this is the kind of result that you are getting. So it also helps you, as I mentioned, in code generation also. So if you give this uh, code to another open API library, I don't know the name at this point. You can Google it also, or I can make another video showing that. Uh, please let me know in comments if I should make another video on that. And if you just give it, uh, give this open API to that, it will generate you a sample code. Okay, that this, this, this is how you should do. And like that sample code will give you an idea on how to write the production level code. So I hope this clears the open API. I tried to be as detailed as possible. I started with a very simple example, which even the people with non-technical degree can understand. And I, uh, slowly I went to the technical explanation. So that's it from my end. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe. I will see you in the next one.